In this video, we will discuss the concept of clinically useful penetration depth. The standard definition of penetration depth depends on the wavelength and the optical properties of the skin. It does not consider the clinical targets or treatments. So we have adopted a more useful definition which considers the wavelength, anisotropy, the spot diameter and the fluence at the skin surface. First, let's consider wavelength and anisotropy. Blue light cannot penetrate too far into the skin. It's strongly absorbed by the melanin, which is there to prevent penetration of potentially damaging blue photons. Red and infrared light, however, can penetrate much further into the skin, even reaching below the dermis. Anisotropy is a measure of how far the light spreads out in the skin. This is wavelength dependent. Blue light tends to spread out much further than red light. OK, so how does spot diameter affect penetration depth? A 2mm spot diameter beam will penetrate a certain distance into the skin. But a 5mm diameter beam with the same wavelength and fluence will penetrate deeper. This is due to scattering effects in the dermis. Now let's look at the fluence at the skin surface. OK, so let's look at two beams striking the skin surface with the same wavelength and spot diameters. So let's compare two fluences, one at 5 joules per square centimetre and the other at 10 joules per square centimetre. So what are the fluences at three different depths? Fluence decreases exponentially as we go deeper into the skin. The left-hand diagram shows how the fluence may drop from 5 to 4 to 3 to 2 joules per square centimetre. However, if there's a higher fluence at the skin surface, then there will be a correspondingly higher fluence within the skin at different depths. This means that you can generate higher fluences deeper in the skin depending on the fluence at the surface. But you must be careful not to use too high a fluence at the skin surface in case you start to damage the skin. So, in summary, a clinically useful penetration depth depends on wavelength, anisotropy, the spot diameter and the fluence at the skin surface. Knowing this should help to generate better clinical results. We hope this has been useful for you, but please go to our website or to our blog to get some more information.